When I was first asked to talk about Canvas and some effective ways of using Canvas, the first thing that I asked myself was, what do, I, what do my students think about Canvas and why do they like it? Okay, I like how accessible Canvas is and I also think that teachers should be more informed as to how to use it. I like Canvas because all of your documents are in one place. I like Canvas because if I miss class, I know what's done in class that day. I like Canvas because I can access all documents at home. The thing I like about Canvas is um, how it helps me do homework well, and it's a lot easier to do homework that way. I like Canvas because it helps me stay organized. I like Canvas because you can turn it in um, that same day. It's super easy to be able to turn in an assignment on time because it's not due that day in class. It's like really flexible and I like this because it allows you to turn in assignments at 11.59. I really like Canvas because all the assignments are very organized so you know what you have to turn in and when. And I like Canvas because you can submit your assignments on there and know what you turned in and what's not turned in. And it's all online so you don't have to worry with papers. Yeah. The takeaways that I got from this video was number one, access content. Students could find everything that was in my course online and access it whenever they needed to. Allow them to work anytime, anywhere that had a Wi-Fi connection. And they could submit a science online and track their progress. This idea of access and multiple representations brought me to the idea of UDL, Universal Design for Learners. The idea that we don't create one assignment that all students do, but we create a wide menu that incorporates every student's abilities and preferences. What this means is there's multiple ways to access course materials, multiple ways to engage in the content, and multiple ways to express understanding. Canvas does a fantastic job of allowing multiple forms of access, engagement, and even expression. How do students access content? When and where? This idea of being, being able to time shift when you do this is fantastic. The idea that you can provide multiple modalities not just text, but you can provide videos and outside articles, multiple sources and perspectives on a topic. It's not just what the textbook says. You can find multiple means and put them all in one place or multiple perspectives, put them all in one place for the students to access. Now, when I think about access, I first thought about, oh, let's make a really pretty homepage for my students. So I did the idea of using tables to put in these buttons that'll take students to modules the basic units in the modules just using PowerPoint images and then, you know that made kind of nice picture the students could click on and it would take them specifically to the modules but it just ended up being one more step for students to get access and I'm not sure if I'll include them next year. Things like organization tends to be a bigger idea. The idea that within a module you use text headers which you can access by hitting that setting bar up there, posting notes from the class providing indents to aid in organization, and also titles, title things appropriately. And also assigning due dates really helps at a first glance to see what's due and when. Ultimately what I learned with all my work is that the number one thing I could be doing to help my site be the best for students is to keep it maintained and up to date. That means posting notes as soon as possible, keeping the calendar up to date, putting assignments online, and due dates, keeping them early and setting them. I can put all the fancy things that I want on there, the pretty pictures, but keeping things up to date is really key. LTI tools allow for integration of third-party apps into Canvas, things like YouTube, College Board, Khan Academy videos, TED-Ed videos, Quizlets, and content from CK12, just a few examples. Now, when you're in your site, one way to add content uh, or actually add access to an LTI app is to go down to settings and usually when you go to settings you'll be on this course detail tab but if you go to the apps tab you can go to an app and just add that app. Sometimes it'll require a consumer key or a shared secret password. If that pops up you can easily get in contact with the app and they can definitely fill you in. So for example something like Dropbox. 
Dropbox account addition. And when you add the app, you can add it just like that. And it'll be added to your site. Now, once we have it on our site, how do we add this content in? So if I go to pages here, and I'm going to create a new page. Uh, maybe I want to put a velocity video up there. Oh, velocity video. I may have tried to do this before. So we can go to YouTube. This little YouTube clip there, and we can search YouTube for a velocity video. I see right here. Well, this is <laughs> might get a video from They Might Be Giants up there, but let's do it. put this one in from Bozeman Science. And it's embedded there, and when I hit hit save, it's going to be embedded within that page. So that's a specific content page. You can keep on adding more if you like, or just leave it at that. Now, another way to add them is straight from modules. So if I want to add something, just like I would add an assignment or a new content page, uh, an external tool I can add. So I have all these tools here. Let's say, let's go to Khan Academy. And we're going to science. So science here. Physics, one dimensional motion velocity, just velocity based on time. You'll see tons of videos here. You could definitely flip your course very well like this. So I was looking for average velocity or speed, and I'll add the item there. Now, many times I tend to use this, and you can see I kind of added this one already just to test it out, but I use these not necessarily as part of a flipped classroom, but the idea that students, if they're looking for alternative resources, can get them there. So if you were going to create a resource tab or a resource module, that'd be a great way to do it. And again, the great thing about these LTI apps is, for example, TED-Ed has these short videos that you can see they're great plays and great comments, and they have questions after them as well, and Quizlet, you can access your Quizlets that way, or even embed content from the College Board, direct links to practice exams. Quizzes are a great way to engage your students. And you can use them in multiple places for multiple purposes. I usually tend to use them as homework problems, so assigning a set the night before. And when I come to class, I can see where we're at. Bell ringers, a great way to get students started if you're in a one-to-one -one environment. Or a reading check. In lecture breaks, sometimes you want to throw a question out to your students. You, we used to do a think pair share, but why not think pair canvas? It's a great way to get submissions from your students. Or also, supplementary video or flipped lesson response questions would be a great way to use a quiz. If you're having an anonymous survey or just a survey in general, and you have an open ended question that you want to throw out, you'll usually see the grading as a zero. So you can't really look at all the responses very easily at one at a time. But if you go to student analysis up here, this is in the quiz summary page. So if you go there, it'll download an Excel spreadsheet. When you look at it, it'll have some information about the students, and you can make this anonymous. And this is a quick way to pull up a list of responses to go over with the class. So if you look at this column here, it'll have all your answers up there that you can scroll through. Now, the mobile app, the importance of the mobile app and the use of the mobile app has been increasing rapidly over the years and the mobile app this year is just the best it's ever been and really rivals the desktop app. It's available on iOS and Android devices. It's fully functional. There's only maybe one or two things you can't do. It has an updated quiz view which takes advantage of the full screen and allows students to access all the content, videos, all files, quizzes, conferencing. You can even have video conferences using an iPad. And discussions work great. One of the recent uh, great additions to Canvas has been the idea of not just peer review, but anonymous peer review. I've never worked with peer review before. I'll show you how you can access it. If you have an assignment, whether you've created it or it's a new assignment, if we scroll down far enough after we've gone through the basic information, we can choose to do a peer review. So you can toggle that on and off, and then you can either manually assign. That could be if you have students who usually work in the same peer review group, or you can automatically assign them, where the service basically sends out copies to students. So you can set the number of peer reviews per user, 
one. After, I've never actually maxed it out, so I don't know what the max is. And then your assigned review time will always be set after the due date. And peer review anonymously is a brand new feature, which is great. The students won't see who is grading their version, and that's really the way it should be done. So we're not worried with bias in any way, shape, or form. This will show up for the students as an assignment, as a part of their to-do list. So if you assign three peer reviews, they'll have three different things in their to-do list to get done. And the teacher can check through a list of who's completed what and how well they graded. And actually looking at the assignment when it's the teacher's time to grade it, they can see the peer reviews as well, just going through a list of them. So one thing to remember when you're using peer reviews, if you're submitting Google document links, they must be visible to all users. If you want students to be able to edit and make comments in the Google Doc, it's really important that the user shares edit rights to anyone with the link. You may even want to think about if you, you are a Google Apps district that anyone within your district can edit. And that would be easier than just letting anyone edit online. For student submissions, we're talking about a variety of ability, different options here. They can upload files. They can use a URL, or they can actually take media on demand, record audio or record a video. And they can also link their Google Drive account. And look, um, when I added that Dropbox app before, it's going to allow access to Dropbox, which is really pretty cool. The advances in SpeedGrader in the last year or so have just been fantastic. And it is the way that I grade all my Canvas assignments, all the reports that my students turn in online, which is just about all of them. So it allows you to see students' documents. Now, if I have them submit a uh, website link, I can see a live sh shot, actually a live look in of that website, or just a screen capture of the time of submission. But what's been really fantastic is I do a lot of work with Rubrics. So I can just pull that Rubric in from that tab, and it looks even better than it does online. It scrunches over or actually squeezes over the assignment. So I can read the entire page of the assignment while I'm grading and add comments. If I have more in-depth comments, I can add those too right next to grade up here. I can choose comments and make an audio, video recording, or type at length. I can go back and look at multiple attempts if they've been submitted. Now, one thing I wasn't really aware of is the question button down on the left of the Canvas site. When I pressed that, I found some nice links to things like the community and the submit a feature idea. I love the community. I started going there more and more often. It's a great place to find answers, but more also ask questions. And they'll usually be answered within a day by some of the great people online. The Canvas Live is another place I go find webinars, which are really fantastic. The real question you have to ask yourself is, why are you using Canvas? Don't try to bend your instruction to meet the needs of an online resource. Find ways to bend Canvas to meet your needs. Or maybe if there's something you haven't tried out because of time constraints like peer reviews, let Canvas be an efficiency tool but also allow students to access more content. The more you put in there, the more students can get out of it. This is Mike Mohammed. Feel free to contact me at my email, mikemohammed at elmbrookschools.org. Uh, follow me on Twitter at MoPhysics, or check out my blog at MoPhysics MoProblems.